Hey folks, David Stewart here. Time for a little bit of mini commentary. This one is on Dungeons and Dragons and Magic the Gathering doing a little collaboration here. D&D's Strixhaven campaign has mechanics for what a hot mess college life can be. And here's the picture that they use as the cover image to promote this. And I'll talk about this in a minute. But one of the things I noticed with a lot of fandoms is an obsession with high school. And it's not just the D&D fandom, and it's not just the Magic the Gathering fandom, which as things have gone on, there's been more interest in things like representing the real world experience of high school or college, but in some sort of fantastical setting. But you also have fandoms that I've interacted with a lot, like the Harry Potter fandom, there's the Twilight fandom, and you even have elements of this in like even Star Wars, you have it in like Star Trek, where, and this really goes way back with Star Trek, where you have all kinds of fan fiction focusing on the Academy experience. And I think what it is, it's a lot of people, um, the creators at least, and a lot of the fans, I guess, who like it, reimagining their high school experience as something meaningful and something uh, fun and something where they had a purpose to what they were doing rather than what they actually experienced. Because what most people experience with high school is probably not different from what they experience, which is that you are a completely interchangeable cog in a machine. No one really remembers you or cares about you. And nothing that you're doing in high school matters to the greater world. It has no impact on earth and it has no impact on your life even beyond school other than you need to get that grade so you can escape from the prison that is high school. But you do have some people that maybe were particularly socially unsuccessful in high school. And if you go look up a lot of the profiles of these creators, you're probably not gonna see people that you're gonna look at and be like, well, that person looks like they were super socially successful in high school. Um, and these people like to reimagine high school as something like what they were promised, maybe in, when they watched Saved by the Bell or Beverly Hills 90210, this dramatic, meaningful, fun, and uh, kind of fulfilling experience that is high school. Instead, they got a very dull prison where they were nobody special, even though they felt like somebody special. They were treated like gray goo. Now, what's kind of ironic is that um, the feeling of being special, I'm special and I'm unique. Uh, among millennials and maybe you know younger people that are younger than millennials is rather ironic because they tend to view the like the jocks and the other people as conformists when everybody pretty much felt like gray goo and didn't feel like they were recognized at all for anything unique they had to offer in the world either they just happened to be kind of in a different you know part of the social hierarchy than the people who felt like outcasts or losers so most people graduate from the prison that is high school. They move on with their lives and they create fulfill, you know, fulfillment and meaning outside of those. And then some people don't. They move on with their lives, but they don't really leave high school. You may have worked with people that haven't left high school behind, at least mentally. They have like a high school mentality where they are jealous of other people. They gossip about other people a lot or you know, they view other people as like some kind of threat to them. They have kind of a... a constant mild narcissism about everybody else that they happen to be working with. They view their boss as like some sort of torturous jock, um, kind of impressing them and and there's like an antagonistic relationship with the boss. When normal people don't necessarily have that. In fact, normal people usually don't have those sorts of experiences. They don't look at their coworkers and feel like their coworkers are getting things that they themselves deserve. They don't look jealously upon other people. That's like the the high school mentality kind of extending forward into adult life. So when it comes to making escapist fantasy, the point of escapist fantasy is not just to escape from the mundane world, but rather to escape to meaning and purpose because the mundane world that you live in is one that's devoid of meaning and purpose for lots of people. And so your escapist fantasy wants to include that meaning fulfillment, that those sorts of feelings that are absent from your regular life. Now, for people who are used car salesmen, their mundane life is really something that's like, I would want to be like a barbarian adventure. For people who maybe are creatives, they are just wishing that high school would have been better for them. So that's what they write. They write high school, but more meaningful. That's really what Harry Potter is in a nutshell is, um, at least for the older fandoms, is 
this gray goo that is Harry Potter, you can put your own gray goo self into and imagine that you're Harry Potter uh, going from a boring neighborhood where nobody likes you into this amazing place where you're a hero, where people like you, where you're good at something like Quidditch or magic, where people recognize you, where you have a special place or you're specially picked to be in a special house based on your special traits. It's, everything's about being special. If you look at this little prom picture that exists right here, Notice all the couples are non-standard. We have uh, like same-sex couples, at least I see, maybe I'm assuming their genders and I'm, I'm bad for that. You know, same-sex couples and, and by multiracial couples, I mean humans and elves even, you know, and so that's, I think, an extension of the mentality. And everybody's smiling and having fun at this prom because most people probably didn't have the best prom experience. Some people probably did and some people, it was a big letdown. So you're reimagining your prom experience with uh, all the things that you wish you had, an ability to express your personal sexuality and that everybody's accepting of that and that it's good and you have a fulfillment and you have good feelings associated with that, that it's beautiful and it's magical and it's all the things that people pretended prom would be rather than going into a gymnasium in a rented tuxedo that doesn't fit you and then uh, sitting up against the wall while your date danced with somebody else, which is just probably a pretty common prom experience. I actually didn't go to prom because I didn't care about that at all. And I was like, I'm not paying like, it was like a hundred and it's like $150 for prom tickets. I'm like, I'm not paying $150. I didn't have a girlfriend at the time. Like, I'm not paying $150 to take some girl uh, you know, to prom and then probably not have a good time. That was me at the time. Anyway, so I think these people get kind of stuck in the high school mentality, mostly because um, they didn't have that fulfilling high school experience and they think they should have a fulfilling high school high school experience, whereas most of us have woken up to the fact that there really is no such thing as this perfect fulfilling experience that doesn't exist and life is going to be imperfect and boring most of the time. So I see these sorts of things like creep into the escapist fiction and that's really what I think about is that they uh, they want to relive their life in a way that where everything was perfect, where they, they were doing things that mattered. Um, so what they were doing had some sort of impact on the world that mattered to the world and it mattered to themselves and that um, they had meaning behind what they're doing and that other people liked and accepted them. That's really kind of the the heart of the Harry Potter fantasy and anybody that's older than high school. Now, if you're in high school, maybe escaping to a better high school is a, is completely normal. But spending a lot of time like wistfully thinking about how high school could have been different when you were a kid, it's, you know, it's probably time to move on from that. So I think the rest of us just don't really have a strong desire to reimagine school as something other than what it was, which was, you know, a suboptimal experience and mostly a waste of time. So thanks so much, guys. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Now, I do have something up on uh, Kindle Vela, and so I will, uh, I'll try to show that to you real quick just to keep you appraised. It's updating Monday through Friday, and it's called The Bright Children. Um, here's a cover here. You can read the first three for free, and I think you actually get some free tokens. So if you if you click on the free tokens, you can get like 200 free tokens and read like the first seven episodes of this if you really want to. Um, this is a different approach to fiction. It's brand new. It's still in beta. It's only available in the U.S. Uh, basically, you buy episodes, you buy tokens, and then you use those tokens to buy episodes of serial fiction that you want. I am releasing this serially. It's going to run through August, um, and uh, that's basically how it is, Monday through Friday. So there's a new one today. There'll be a new one tomorrow. Uh, every day this week, there'll be a new little chapter to read, and that's going to go through August. If you're otherwise interested in Kindle Vela, most authors that I've seen just put their full books up. And so they're not really buying into the social or buying into the uh, serial fiction thing. They're just offering another way to, for people to purchase their books with with Kindle Vela tokens. So that's another way to access some books. Uh, but mine's up there. That's the brand new one. It's called The Bright Children, and I will have more books coming for you uh, after the summer concludes. Um, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.